New information just into our newsroom. Four Marines were killed in a crash involving a military aircraft from Camp Pendleton. CBS News confirmed this information with a federal source, so no word on the fate of the fifth Marine on board. We have CBS 8's Chris Grow live outside Camp Pendleton with the latest. Chris? Yeah, good morning, Dana Marie, and something else that was highlighted in that report as well, too, is they're still waiting to confirm if there were potentially other personnel that were on board that aircraft, how many people uh, were on board that aircraft when it went down or even when it took off. We do know, of course, that those five Marines were on board. Sadly, four of them were killed that fifth. Again, we are waiting on an update on their status. Now, they were in Imperial County conducting a training mission when this crash occurred. It happened around 12.30 p.m. yesterday near Glen Lamis, which is 25 miles east of El Centro. It's an area where there uh, where the Marines do conduct a lot of training missions. Now this Osprey belonged to the third Marine aircraft wing, which is based out of uh, MCIS Miramar, but the Osprey itself was based out of Marine Corps Air Station Camp Pendleton. Now the um, we did speak with Jim Kidrick, who is a retired Navy commander and former fighter pilot. He's also the president and CEO of the San Diego Air and Space Museum. We spoke with him to get context about not only the aircraft, the Osprey, which is used to transport troops and supplies uh, and also has the ability to fly as both a helicopter and an airplane, but also to get context here on what this in investigation will try to uncover. Take a listen to what he had to say. Set down uh, exactly where they want that airplane to land. They don't need a runway. Uh, the investigation, of course, is going to be extremely thorough. Now, something that the Marines uh, clarified in their initial press release here is that uh, contrary to social media reports, there was no nuclear material on board this Osprey. Of course, as more updates become available, we'll be sure to update you on CBS8.com. Eric and Dana Marie. And new this morning, police are investigating a fatal shooting out of Oceanside. This happened around 12.30 a.m. at John Lance Park along Cedar Road. There are very few details we have right now, but we do know one man died. Police tell us there is no one in custody and they don't have a suspect description. Call Oceanside Police if you have any information. This morning, authorities are investigating another drug tunnel that runs from Tijuana to the United States. Look at this thing here. Very sophisticated. Mexican authorities say the tunnel ran under the border from a home in Tijuana to a home in San Diego. The tunnel, nearly 800 feet long with rails, lighting, and a ventilation system. This is the second tunnel authorities have uncovered in the same area in less than a month. And the husband of Maya Miliete is due back in court today for a status conference. Larry Miliete is accused of killing his wife, Maya. The Chula Vista mother has been missing for more than 500 days and her body has not been found. After today's court appearance, Larry Miliete will return to court June 27th for a preliminary hearing on those murder charges. Also today, a man accused of driving under the influence and killing a pedestrian in Kearney Mesa will make his first court appearance. Now, this happened Tuesday morning. Frank Schof is accused of running a red light while behind the wheel of his Tesla, killing a 40-year-old woman while she was crossing Convoy Street. That woman later died in the hospital. The House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol begins its series of televised public hearings today. The riot was intended to stop the certification of President Biden's election victory. Deborah Alferon is at the Capitol now with a preview. The select House committee hearings on the January 6th insurrection are expected to stretch out over weeks. During six scheduled sessions, the panel is set to present witness accounts and videos from the violent day that shocked the nation nearly a year and a half ago. We want the public to understand how close we came to losing our democracy and most important, uh, the fact that we are not out of the woods. Committee members are expected tonight to hear from a U.S. Capitol police officer and a filmmaker who documented movements around the Capitol that morning. The insurrection came as Mr. Trump refused to concede the 2020 election. An estimated 2,000 rioters breached the Capitol building in an effort to stop lawmakers from certifying Joe Biden's White House victory. The nine-member committee is made up of seven Democrats and two Republicans. Many GOP lawmakers have been sharply critical of the panel, calling it overly partisan. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign 
against President Donald Trump. In its work, the committee has interviewed about a thousand witnesses and received 140,000 documents in connection with the attack. Deborah Alfarone, CBS News, Washington. The first of six televised hearings airs today at 5 o'clock our time, and you can watch it live right here on CBS 8. And the House just passed a wide-ranging gun control bill, but it has a slim chance of moving forward. This comes after lawmakers heard emotional testimony from victims and others involved in recent mass shootings. One 11-year-old little girl detailed how she survived the shooting in Uvalde. He shot my friend that was next to me, and I thought he was going to come back to the room, so I grabbed the blood and I put it all over me. Maya's classmate Lexi was one of the 19 killed in that attack. Her parents demanded Congress ban assault weapons. Many Republicans appear to be on board with enhanced background checks and incentives for red flag laws, but say further restrictions are unconstitutional. The House bill is unlikely to pass the Senate, but there's a less ambitious bipartisan bill working its way through the Senate now. This morning we are seeing, yes, record gas prices. For the 13th day in a row now, we're paying nearly $6.33. I know what you're asking, when will this end? It is up a cent from yesterday. An expert from Gas Buddy says, well, he doesn't expect the prices to go down anytime soon. This year will be more likely that we'll see the peak in price sometime in late July, or early August. I don't think this is gonna be something that we get out of overnight. I think prices will remain high for most of the summer. Yeah, he shared some suggestions to save on gas, including driving more slowly and be sure to use that cruise control. I try to do that as much as I can. It can every little bit helps at this point. My wife and I were making the uh, vacation plans, Evan, and uh, boy, things change a little bit when you start thinking about how much you're going to have to pay to just drive somewhere. Yeah, you realize uh, maybe the staycation might be a better idea <laughs> than be doing a lot it was of that. before. Exactly, right? We're, we're really going to be well-versed in our county map uh, by yeah. the uh, next couple, what, months, years? Who knows? We might uh, be going to where you are right Yeah, now, right? Hey, Coronado. Coronado, it's a good place to go. I mean, like we say, we can't uh, really complain much. We've got Coronado. We've got, I mean, four different microclimates. The coastline here uh, inundated with clouds. We also have your inland valleys where we're starting to cool down just a little bit right now, but going to warm up dramatically by the afternoon. And then your mountains, of course, keeping things a little bit more moderate, but still above average this afternoon. Borrego Springs, Ocotillo Wells in the deserts. Well, that's where we're going to be in the 110 to 120 range. So uh, this heat wave that's coming our way for the next couple days is really going to shift show its strength today through Sunday. Saturday is likely going to be the day of peak heat across San Diego County. A little bit of fog out there, low level cloud cover to start off the day. Temperatures in the low 70s along the coast, meaning will only be a few degrees above average for your coastline. That's because of the sea breeze and coastal eddy that continues to keep things more moderate. 88 for your inland valleys, that's about 10 degrees above average. 87 across the mountains, also about 10 above average. And then your deserts at 112 will stretch toward nearly 15 degrees degrees above average and today's only day one that excessive heat warning remains all the way through Sunday. Tomorrow we keep building Saturday is even warmer and then Sunday we've got a partial decline, but it's really not going to be all that dramatic of a shift in temperatures 609 right now that sunrise was 20 minutes ago 30 minutes ago. I should say here's the view from Mount Woodson. You see how expansive that marine layer is for starters, but once those clouds start to break apart, that sun is really going to deliver some warmth to us and that day length keeps extending 756 is that current sunset. It'll be past 8 p.m. by the time we get to that summer solstice in just a uh, about two weeks from now. Excessive heat warning. That's the one that takes effect at 10 a.m. So just under four hours. We got it extended all the way through Sunday. Covers San Diego County deserts specifically, but countywide we're going to be feeling the heat and uh, across much of the desert southwest of the United States. That excessive heat warning spans. Let's take a look at what's going on as far as traffic goes. Got a couple things to mention. First, want to take you to the 805. Uh, we have a crash. This was a vehicle that hit the center divider waiting for a tow truck 
truck to arrive, but it looks like they did have to close at least a portion of the 805. CHP now pushing this over to the shoulder and its speeds are improving there on those northbound lanes of the 805 at the 52. However, it is still slightly slower in that uh, area. So keep that in mind if you're heading out for your morning commute. Also still have this crash on the 8 eastbound at Tavern Road. Looks like this was a two car collision, not causing any major backups right now. Working to get more information from the CHP. I'll send things back to you too.